In at least one way, salamanders are like chickens. They too cross the road to get to the other side. And in Presque Isle Park on the shores of Lake Superior in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, the city of Marquette is helping the salamanders make their journey safely. I really like when I start to see one move and then they'll freeze. They just woke up and they need a cup of coffee. So they take a break and then they'll start moving again and crossing the road. Kathleen Henry is the special projects coordinator with the Superior Watershed Partnership. We have people coming out at all hours in the middle of the night in, the, in rain to observe uh, the salamanders moving. And for the most part, everyone's been super, super respectful and very engaged and wanting to learn more about the salamanders. And not just any salamanders, blue spotted salamanders. Crawling across a road at night in the rain is what they do every spring at Presque Isle Park in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Measuring three to five inches long, these salamanders have a stout body with a broad head and wide mouth. Dr. Jill Leonard heads the biology department at Northern Michigan University. So these animals, um, they will thaw out from winter and they will start walking through the snow actually um, to get to their natal pond, which for us is the bog um, that's right across the road. That bog is where the salamanders meet up, lay eggs and reproduce. After three or four days in the bog, the salamanders cross back over the road hide under logs or burrow into the ground. These four-legged amphibians have been following this same pattern for thousands of years, since long before there were roads here. And this road is closed for them now, largely because of this guy, Eli Beery. Here's the main cabin, and I will take you above deck. The sun's just rising. This is home. <laughs> Beery is a Fulbright scholar currently living on a sailboat while doing research into amphibians in Australia. But about four years ago, he was an undergrad biology student at Northern Michigan University in Marquette. While studying there, he routinely took walks through the woods on rainy nights with some fellow biology students looking for salamanders. And then this one night at Presque Isle Park, we were blown away when we saw like truly hundreds of salamanders crossing the road at the same time. Um, and that was really incredible until a car started coming by and squishing the salamanders. Beery and his advisor, Dr. Jill Leonard, developed a research plan and found that up to 20% of the salamanders were being killed by cars. At that rate, the local salamander population would eventually go extinct. So just exactly how many blue spotted salamanders live in the Presque Isle area? Scientists don't know for sure. But I can tell you it's certainly in the thousands. One of the things that we're working on through a citizen science project is really to try to census how many individuals are crossing the road. It sounds like a joke to do with chickens, but how many salamanders cross the road will really help us understand the population size here. Beery says the blue spotted salamander plays a vital role in the local ecosystem, eating insects and providing food for other animals. Foxes, birds, snakes, other amphibians, pretty much everything eat salamanders. They're actually a really good indicator species to, to indicate ecosystem health uh, because if there's an issue with the soil or the air or the water, salamanders will be the first to be affected. In the course of his research, Beery discovered something interesting about some of the salamanders at Presque Isle. Some of them have what he called funky genetics. We noticed that some of the females in the population were much, much larger than they normally are, two to three times larger, and their pattern was a little different. Normally they're a really dark, almost black color with little blue spots, but these females were almost completely patternless and like a slate gray color. And there was something else a bit strange about some of the salamanders. Yeah, we figured out that their unisexual population of all female that actually clone themselves through a process called parthenogenesis. You know, most people never even see a salamander in their lifetime, and yet they're fabulous. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to watch them walking across a, a snowbank in the middle of the wintertime. 
Eli's research convinced the city of Marquette to shut down the stretch of road used by the salamanders during the spring migration, and the road closure got a lot of people interested. Two, three hundred people at a time, walking around, staring at the ground, looking at salamanders. It sounds a little crazy, I know, but it's actually really amazing. The city of Marquette is now hosting Salamander Days events every spring. Mayor Jenna Smith admits she wasn't a big fan of the little critters at first. But I've come to learn about their place here in our community and I really enjoy Salamander Days now. I've come full circle on salamanders, so I really appreciate that now we're embracing our culture and celebrating with art. Longtime resident and artist Dan Barrington was one of the people who came up with the idea for the annual event at his retirement party. We were just talking and I said, I think it'd be great if there was salamander days. And what I imagined was like a spring festival and the salamander would be the centerpiece. Barrington's plywood rendition of the blue spotted salamander took up residents outside City Hall and on the front steps of the Superior Watershed Partnership office. What I was thinking of is something along this line, which would be a bigger, like a two by 10 and two by 12 and some legs, just simple representation, painted up because I've done something like that before. Tina Morin is the arts and culture manager in Marquette. The Children's Museum did art-inspired salamanders activities. Our local brewery, Black Rocks, made a special salamander session beer that was on tap for the migration period. And there was plenty of salamander art. The best of show winner was Susan Estler, who worked with enamel and copper to come up with her creation took a silhouette of one of the salamanders. When I was looking at photos of it, I thought this is just the perfect medium to represent the salamanders because he looks like a real salamander. People of all ages submitted artwork and a few of the outstanding artists were honored at City Hall. The migration of salamanders, we thought, well, that's a wonderful opportunity for people to really consider the salamander, think about uh, its habitat, learn more about it to do that through art. I think that this project is a great example and could be used to encourage individuals to look to their local migratory species, whether that be salamanders or turtles or, or whatnot, um, and see in their local area what could be done to conserve those species in your local areas. I think if you're in Marquette or really anywhere in the Great Lakes region and it's a warm, rainy spring night, go out with a flashlight because you never know what you're going to find. They're all around and it's totally worth seeing. Thanks for watching. For more on these stories and the Great Lakes in general, visit greatlakesnow.org. When you get there, you can follow us on social media or subscribe to our newsletter to get updates about our work. See you out on the lakes.